on to the adventure and put my on W four C Y three. Wake up, America! It's time for the adventures of Hype Man on W4CY.com, West Palm Beach's number one internet radio station. Here's your host, the Hype Man. This is the Pipe Man here on the Adventures Pipe Man W4CY Radio, and we're bringing on our next guest who is a killer musician with a killer story. And Kurt is going to be here in Florida, too, performing live in Orlando at the Florida Plaza Live, June 3rd, 2022. Also right here in South Florida at the Parker Playhouse in Fort Lauderdale, June 4th, 2022. So let's welcome to the show, Kurt Dimer. How are you? Good. How are you doing, Dean? Thank you for having me. Or do you want me to call you the pipe man? You can call me anything you want, but yeah, on the radio, <laughs> I'm the pipe man. But I'm not, you know, it's, I'll tell you a funny story about that. So I had somebody, she's not with me anymore, but uh, her radio moniker was Rebel Meddler. And we're going to do, and you, you can understand this, you're going to laugh, Okay. We're going to do yeah. press coverage for an event, okay? And yeah. it was like a puddle and mud show, I think it was. And we go up to get our press credentials, and they ask, you know, her name. And she says, Rebel Meddler. And I looked at her, I'm like, Rebel, they need your real name, okay? She's like, that is my real name. Yeah. I'm like, is that the name on your license? Because they're going to want to see your ID. They don't just give press passes to anybody because they have a cool name. <laughs> and right. right. She, and it just couldn't say good. Like, she, it was like, well, what do they need that for? Because they, they're not just going to give a press pass to anybody. <laughs> no, the rebel meddler. <laughs> right, exactly. So, so it's like, yeah, I'm pipe man. But I'm Dean off the air. Like, uh, like I don't know. Sometimes people, they get too involved in their roles. Like, it was funny, yeah. though. Nobody that worked at the radio station ever knew her real name except me because I signed her paycheck, you know. But she would yeah. never reveal her real name. I'm like, Rebel, you're ridiculous. <laughs> it's it's, you're it's, your, so it's your moniker, man. It's, it's you know, Go back into real life. It's like people that live on social media and think that's real life. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah. I know. And, and when they when I got my, my current management, they go, you're going to change back to your name, Kurt Dimer. And I'm like, because you, we love your name for rock and roll. And I'm like, okay. But up until then, I went under the, to, when I brought my demo out to California, that when I first got noticed by Chris Lord Algae, I was bald man. So I, I was like calling myself bald man, like That's talking, yeah, what would bald man do? What would, but so it's kind of nice to be back to just my name now. That's not so confusing for everybody. So, well, it is funny. My kids even sometimes will call me pipe man. <laughs> pipe man. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like oh, my, my kid, my kids were calling me bald man. My boys are going, what's up bald man? I'm like, <laughs> yeah. See, it's same, same thing right there. I love it. And you come I'm from the business world, so that's why I was really excited about this interview because, you know, I, there's not many of us in the music world that come from the business world. I mean, I originally came from the music world, went to the business world, and went back to the music world. Well, I, I, I uh, played in a band back in the late 80s, back when the Afghan wigs were breaking out of Cincinnati. That's where I'm from. And that's where I went to college. So I was in a band called the Circus Birds, and we played the you know the plaza where the Afghan wigs did, or Sudsy Malone's right across from Bogarts. And I did that till I was about twenty, and I realized I was going nowhere fast. I was drinking too many hootie delights and uh, just having <laughs> too much fun. And I met met. My, my, I have three boys and I met their mom and uh, we kind of helped each other out at a young point in life. And, uh, 
got married too young, but uh, I got out of the music business, obviously, because she didn't want me to be in it. And uh, I said, if I can ever do this someday and do it right, I'll do it. And back then, I was just still trying to find my way, figure out what to do. I was always very entrepreneurial and very hardworking, even though I liked to party a little too much. And uh, I went off and finished getting my degrees and uh, figured out how to start my own oil companies. I, I learned the oil business and bought some real estate to help get some funds and, you know, rent them, rented them out and figured out how to do that with no money down. I took the Carlton sheets course and did that, got that my oil company started and now they've grown and they run themselves. And I went down to do a cameo for my brand Starfire in the movie trading paint that stars John Travolta and Shania Twain. This was in September of 2017, and as I'm there waiting to do a cameo where you just stand in a scene, they offered me a speaking line, and the next thing I know, I'm acting with John Travolta in this final scene of this movie, and Toby Sebastian from Game of Thrones, and there's Shania Twain, we, we talked, and I'm like, what the hell just happened to me? And I'm like, <laughs> I, I guess it's time. I guess it's time. Then I get the role in Halloween. I get killed by Michael Myers. I mean, how classic is that? It doesn't real, get any like, better than that. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what just happened to me now? And, you know, in December of 2018, after the Halloween premiere, I was at that with Jamie Lee Kurt. I'm like, what is going on? So then I had, a, I was doing a lot of film work in Alabama and I had a buddy play some songs for me uh, that he had done. He's a producer, writer, and he sounded like a wedding singer. And I go, I love the tunes, but it's just boring. It just sounds like you're playing at a wedding. Let me try my voice. I used to, you know, sing in a band and I've got a unique voice and let me put my style on it. And so December, 2018, I started writing with Ben Trexel out of uh, Alabama, Birmingham. And, uh, got this demo under bald man, got it out to LA. Um, and, during COVID, I wanted it remixed because I didn't like where it was standing at that point. And that's how I met Chris Lord Algae. And he's like, man, I love this. I love your style. And he took me under his wing. And next thing I know, we're doing Have a Cigar cover and his way and with my voice. And he brings in this guitar player to play on it. Didn't tell me who it was. Come to find out it's Phil X. And next thing I know, I'm shooting, have a cigar video, met Phil X for the first time. And now we're like best friends. And here we are just going to conquer the world with our new, with our music. And uh, we're writing like crazy. So that's how it kind of all unfolded in a nutshell. You know, what's so funny about that is it, it, it's an even closer pattern than I even realized because, okay, so I'll tell you my story real quick. So I grew up in New Jersey and I moved, uh, not my choice, but to California in 1980. So, uh -huh. of course, I was immediately introduced to the Sunset Strip. And uh, yeah. imagine what that's yeah. like in 1980, 81. <laughs> mm. And uh, I've heard. Yeah. So I was totally, I was totally in that scene. I spent like every Friday, Saturday, Sunday at the Sunset Strip. Sometimes now I think about it, I don't even know how I did. So, like I was hanging out at the Rainbow partying and I was 15 years old. And, and like now I go to the Rainbow and they ask for ID. I'm like, I'm 55 and you're asking me for ID and I used to party here when I was 15. And you didn't ask me for ID. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. so, uh, yeah. It was wild, wild, and it totally got me into music. But what it also did was, okay, so I played drums for 10 years or nine years. I, I started playing electric guitar, and I also sang, like, thrash metal. And I remember the start a whole hair metal gig, and, like, I was friends with a lot of those bands on the Sunset Strip, and I was sitting backstage when they were getting signed with these record labels, and I remember the record labels just telling them, okay, this is how you're going to look, this is how you're going to sound, blah, 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 you know the gig. And, uh, right. I was like, bump this. Okay. I was a thrash metal head. So it was like, I am not selling out and being a poser no matter what. So what happened was, is when I, you know, left high school and I went to college, 
I entered the business world because I didn't mind selling out in the business world. I just wasn't going to sell out when it came to music, you know, and right. it was right. that youthful thing too, like not th thinking a certain way and not even realizing music is actually a business anyway. But uh, so here's the interesting part. I owned brokerage firms and one of the main things I did was trade oil and gas futures. So really? Yeah. How wild. And then I had a cousin who also an older cousin, like my dad's age, he owned, a, you know, an oil and gas firm, you know, selling the uh, oil and gas partnerships back in the day. And uh, so as soon as you said about oil, I was like, wow, that's so funny because it's almost like a, such a similar path. Yeah, no, it's crazy, man. And, and uh, you've, you've done what you wanted to do and you've done it your way. And that's what I needed to do. I needed to step away. I knew I was going to go nowhere playing in bars when, that young. I was too immature. I didn't know how to handle it. And, yeah. But I, I also remembered all the iconic shows that I saw back in the day then and that I wanted to do that someday. But I just told myself, if it happens, it'll happen. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But when it does, I'll know the time is right and I'll be able to attack it, you know, and win. And I'll be able to take the lumps. And uh, believe me, I've taken a lot of lumps the last couple of years. But here we are. And uh, it, the, the, the future is looking really good. And we've got some killer stuff coming out, all kinds of music we're writing together, me and Phil and Chris. And I'm very blessed to be able to do what my my, my dream was as a, as a young teen, you know, to play in a rock band and be a front man and put on these epic shows and build a fan base. It's just a, very much a blessing. So, and, and to perform on ship rock. How about that? Man, I, I watched a couple yeah. of your videos, man. That was badass. Yeah. With HR from bad. I mean, here I am doing three little birds with HR and Sonny from POD. And then I, and Bumblefoot was on both of my, uh, both of my songs, both nights, which, he's a legend yeah and uh, yeah it was very very surreal i was very very happy to be asked to be a part of that so hopefully the band will be on ship rock next year so there you go that's what we're hoping you know and it is interesting too one of the things i really like about you is there's you know i'm also a motivational speaker so again you, you hit a note with me when i'm looking up about you and how your songs are about you know a positive message and you know, trying to make people feel better during these, like, times that, I mean, come on, people. Like, stop attacking, stop be arguing, stop being so divided. Yeah. You know, let's just get along. And everybody has different viewpoints. And my big thing is I hate labels. My, my thing is as long as you're not purposely hurting anybody, you do you, okay? It, like, it, it's That's not I not my business, <laughs> you know? It's, yeah, I do me. I do me. And you, if you like my voice and you like my delivery and you like my message, it's like therapy for me to write songs. I'm getting my life experiences out of my brain. And, you know, you're, you're a motivational speaker. My grandfather was a motivational speaker and he toured the country doing nice. motivational speaking for com companies. So that's kind of cool too, man. We got a lot of similarities. And my dad was the kind man who could have ran funeral homes if he had the money to start it and would have been great at it, but he was in the oil business. So I figured I'd learn that first and did that on my own. And I told him one day, I go, dad, I can't work for this big company. Like you've done your whole life. I respect what you've done, but it's just not me. I, I got to be on my own. And, you know, I want to make as much as you made in a year, like in a month. And, uh, so he, he supported me all the way. And, very kind. You got to, you got to treat people with kindness and respect. And if I can share a message with you and you like it, great. If you don't like it, Hey, we all don't like pepperoni on our pizza. We all like different toppings. Then just respectfully move on. You don't need to hate on each other. There's too much hate in this world and it's ruining, uh, you know, people down to the core. It's hurting people and you don't see it. And like back in the school, I wrote the song, which back in the day we take our issues out in the back of the school, you know, and but now you, people just fight each other on the internet and slaughter people. It's crazy. Oh. And I try to just keep it positive. Like you don't have to be that way. Yeah. It just kind of blows my mind, you know, 
how people are because listen like we both believe like if it's not affecting my life what do you really care like what you know right i, I don't get it man it you know, I would get it if if it's something that they're doing that actually affects your life in a bad way. But come on, it, it, it's not right. even it doesn't even have a bearing on your life. So just let people be people, you know, I mean, there, there's a lot of number one selling artists out there and I don't like their music, but I don't go on there and belittle them because I don't right. like the music. And I just choose to listen to something different, which everybody has a choice. You don't have to belittle each other. There's too many. It's too easy for people to bully now on the Internet, and it just drives me crazy. You know, what's funny, too, you know, is even in music is like, so I was interviewing Josie Cotton one time, which I've done a couple times. We've become friends now. And I told her right on the interview, I'm like, you know, when I was a teenager and you were hot, uh, and I didn't mean hot looking. I meant, you know, hot commodity. I'm like, yeah. I wasn't allowed to like you. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, yeah, but I secretly did. And now I can admit it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and you should like what you like. And if you don't like it, then go listen to what you like. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm going to stay true to me and I'm going to stay true to my voice. I'm going to say, stay true to my message. And, uh, I'm going to write the way I write. And, we got a lot of people that dig it, and, you know, there will be a lot of people that don't dig it, but it's cool. Just the you way know, of the thanks world. For, thanks for giving it a try. Thank you for giving it a listen. You know, that's all. Kill them with kindness, my grandpa always thought. Exactly. And you know what? That's what's great about you as an artist, and, uh, you know, the music is good, and you are good, and people will like it. My listeners will certainly like it. And I also want to add one more note about what you said. I actually still have my Carlton Sheets program tape set in a box somewhere in storage. <laughs> do you really? I do. Yeah. How funny is that? Dude, I, used to, I used to watch that shit like on TV at night because my brain was always trying to figure out. My, my 20s were so stressful because I'm trying to figure out what can I do? What can I do to make money? And that Carlton Sheets, my dad and I did, did it together and, uh, I kind of took the bull by the horns. He didn't really get it like how I was going to do it. And I just did it, man. And it, it's crazy that you know the same thing because that thing was on every night. I know, right? <laughs> it's yeah. so funny. Oh, my God. That's so great. So tell everybody how they can connect to you on social media, on the web, check okay. out your YouTube, all that stuff. Well, the main hub kind of for we call it the fam club instead of fan club because we're building the Kurt Dimer family. So you can go to KurtDimer.com, K-U-R-T-D-E-I-M-E-R.com. That's the main hub. You'll see tours. You'll be able to get merch. You'll be able to get our CDs. When vinyl finally becomes available, that'll be there. Kind of the hub. Um, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Kurt Dimer. I would love that. I communicate with all my fans all the time. And uh, YouTube, we're at Kurt Dimer. Subscribe to that. That's where our videos come out. So those are the main ways. Um, but the, the KurtDimer.com. And uh, we're also, our first album, Work Hard, Rock Hard, is on Spotify, Apple. Would love to have you follow me there. And, uh, you know, like our music and just keep sharing it with the, everybody else in the world until it spreads all over the globe. And uh, we'll be coming to a city near you. I love it. I love your music. I love the positive message from it. I love everything about it. Everybody check it out. And thank you for giving us such great music. And thank you for being on the Adventures of Pipe Man. Hey, Dean, thank you for having me. And uh, I'm always happy to come on anytime. You just reach out and let me know. You got it. And don't forget, listeners, make sure to check out Kurt Dimer in Orlando at Florida Plaza Live on June 3rd, 2022. And then the next day, June 4th, 2022, right down here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida at the Parker Playhouse. Check out Kurt Dimer. The live show is going to be amazing. And make sure to connect to Kurt on social media and check out all his music. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to the Adventures of Pipe Man on W4CY Radio.